So what we want to do is, basically, we want our rival Pokemon, whoever's our, you know, enemy's Pokemon, to be something different than what we have. So if we have Charmander, we don't want to battle Charmander again, right? We want to battle one of these two guys, right? So what we're going to do is, we're going to do a do wow loop. So we're going to say something like this, like do, right? And then we're going to take this code, which is the code that chooses which is the rival Pokemon. We're going to cut that and paste it inside of it, right? And then we're going to say down here, do while. And then we're going to say game state dot user Pokemon equals to rival pokemon all right so we're gonna say game state that rival pokemon that rival pokemon all right so what this is going to do is it's going to run through this code and it's going to repeat it every single time that basically the user's pokemon and the rival pokemon's names are the same so if I choose Charmander, it's going to do it one more time because we already named it Charmander and it equals to the same thing. So then it's going to say, okay, so I'm going to run this code again one more time until I get something different than Charmander. So what we're going to do is we're going to console log this so we can actually see that in action. So let's say, uh, let's see looping right but sorry let me put some some quotes around this say looping and then you're gonna say game state that rival Pokemon so let's see what it looks like all right says looping squirtle so once it got to squirtle that says that okay it's fine let's do it one more time see looping charmander two times so it means it gave us charmander two times and basically it kept going around and said okay one time charmander okay it equals the same thing as the user's pokemon so let's do it one more time looped again and it said charmander again and then they say, let's do it one more time. And then once it equals to something different, like Squirtle, then it stopped looping. And then from there, the code can continue on. Remember that we did this in the init. This is where we use game state that CPU pick. So when we click on one of these icons to choose a Pokemon, right? We click on that, we choose a Pokemon, then from there we have the user's Pokemon's name and then we get to choose the CPU pick. So it's going to be stuck here. It's gonna keep on looping until it finds a different Pokemon, you know, that doesn't equal to the user Pokemon. So as soon as it does that, then it continues on to the rest of the code that's down here, right? So yeah, man, that's one way to do this and I'll see you guys in the next video. This was just a pretty quick video just to get it up and going and make sure that we don't get the same Pokemon. And then now we just continue battling. And then, yeah. Hey guys, it's your boy Joe back at it again. Guys, this video that you just saw is actually part of my course, Future Proof JavaScript. Listen, guys, you're going to learn JavaScript the right way, the money way, the easy way. The way that you're going to understand it. I know you tried Team Treehouse. I know you tried Udemy. I know you tried YouTube. It's fine. But you guys know me. Y'all know how I do. Basically, nobody's going to explain JavaScript the way that I do. And I'm making it easy for anybody who wants to get better with JavaScript or people who are just starting from scratch. Right? So you have the course here, man. 
Check it you out. You will not only go from codingface.com, but you will go directly from the link that's on my description, which will give you a 50% off automatically. 50% off original price, right? And if you're really, really smart with it, you will actually do the all access pass, right? For $10, right? <laughs> and that's what I would do, man. For $10, get access to all the courses. You can't go wrong, guys. All right, so I'll see you guys around.